This is Fenland Falls near Peterborough. And a few years ago, an aerial photographer saw some interesting crop marks here and took some photos. This is one of them. And these are the marks. They're huge, about 200 metres across from here to here. Archaeologists had a look at the photos and got very excited. They think that they're evidence of a 6,000-year-old structure, which they call a Neolithic causeway enclosure. But agreeing on a name and agreeing they're very important is the easy part. Agreeing what they're for is very different. Is this evidence of a massive farm or some kind of settlement or a ritual site. Very few of these things have ever been dug, so anything we find could help solve the puzzle. And we've got just three days to do it. The plan is to put trench one on the inner ring of the ditches on the east side and a second trench on the west side where the ring of ditches disappears under an area of thick mud left by an ancient river channel. The dark band running down the middle is mud left by a Roman canal. The geophysics team have finished surveying the areas targeted for the two trenches and the results aren't what was expected. You've got the problem, I'm afraid. This is where the inner ditch should run. We've done the geophysics and I can't see it at all. But oh, uh, there is something here, isn't there? I just think that's probably geological. Well, it shows up superbly well on the photograph. I know it does, but look at the other end. Well, well, you that, can't see it. Well, that's just that black alluvium stuff, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but look at the geophysics. <laughs> it's so clear. Isn't it? I don't understand why we're not seeing it at this end mm. when mm. it's so clear here. Mm. Does that alter our plan? Um, yeah, not drastically. <laughs> I think we want to go for where we can see it nice and clearly. So we'll send Uncle Phil off to that trench. And what will you, you'll stop here, will you? Because you, you're going to need a lot of your experience on this sort of ground to, yeah. to, to sort that out. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. No, I'll stay over here. And maybe with a bit of help from Henry, if he can pin the air photo He should down, be able to you? mark that. The yeah. other side of the field? Yeah, well, it's happy with me. <laughs> See you later. As the ring of ditches on the east side didn't show up in the geophysics, it's down to our surveyor Henry to calculate where to put Trench 1. He does this by matching the ditch outline seen on the aerial photograph to GPS readings. Basically, you stood on it now. As far as you understand, I've set out these, these two pairs of canes. Yeah. Should mark either side of the causeway, which gives a ditch that side yeah. and a ditch that side. On the west side, the ditches show up clearly on the geophysics, so John can tell Phil exactly where they're located. So you should get the ditch coming through here terminating here, a break, and then another big pit or ditch sedgement. A bit this way. Finding the rings of ditches is going to be key to figuring out why Neolithic people built these monuments. What we do know is that after two million years wandering the landscape, our hunter-gatherer ancestors began a more settled existence. This change from a completely nomadic lifestyle marked the beginning of the Neolithic Age, which in Britain lasted from 4,000 until 2,500 BC, when metals first came into use. Causewayed enclosures were built from the very start of the Neolithic period and must have played an important role in the new way of life. Right, I think we're done at the right level here, Kerry. You can see it's good and clear. Yeah. So you see the change from the orange here to the clay. Yeah, it's very clear from up here. Is it? Yeah. I think that's your buried Neolithic soil. Right. Francis's trench on the east side and Phil's on the west side are both placed where we think the inner ring of the ditches is. If we look at these trenches in the context of the entire field, we can get our first real sense of how big the monument is. But it's not the only one discovered in this area. So this is our causeway enclosure here, and there's another one here, and one here, and one here, and yet another one here. Yet these are very rare Neolithic <laughs> phenomenon, and we've got five together. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I think it was deliberate. I think these are marking the edge, the boundary, of a really important cultural territory. Cultural, Stuart? Well, it could be cultural, it could be practical as well, because if you, if you look at this grouping, and they are very close together, they seem to relate to the Valley of the Welland. And if you look at this geological map, over here, all these pretty colours are upland. All this blank yellow out here is, is 
Fenland, it's bog, it's unpleasant. But all these enclosures occur where the Welland meets the bog effectively, they're on this zone in between. So I think we've got to look at reasons why they all cluster together. So are you going to try and tie them all up for us? Well, I'd like to. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big task. I'm going to go and look at these locations for the causewayed enclosures we know about and see how they relate to the geography, how they relate to each other, see if we can somehow get back to the landscape of the Neolithic. Two in our quest to find out what Neolithic people were doing here 6,000 years ago. Yesterday we were looking for the all-important ring ditches and we found a slice of one just here. So now we're looking for evidence of people on the ground. How are we doing on that score, Francis? Well, that's fantastic, Tony. We've actually got the original surface on which people would have walked around in the Neolithic. This is this dark stuff here? This is the dark stuff here. But you've got, look, you've got burnt bone here. You've got a large piece of bone here. You've got pieces of pottery there. It, it's intact. It's absolutely extraordinary. You know, people were walking here 6,000 <laughs> years ago. Is this in the ditch? Ah, no. This is on a causeway. Now look, let me explain how it works. The ditch comes through to that drawing board there. So the ditch is going this way? It's going like that. Yeah, the ditch yeah. is going like that. It comes to the drawing board where it stops. OK? Then you have an undug bit, which so is the is causeway. The causeway going in this it's direction. It's going in that direction. Yeah, yeah. And then the ditch picks up again over there. So now we have the basic structure of the monument. A ditch, then a causeway, and then another ditch. The word causeway is perhaps a little confusing, since it suggests a structure, but in fact all they are is the gaps between the ditches. The other segment of ditch is over here. And have we found anything here? Uh, yes, same thing again. Everything's preserved. There's been a lot of bonfires or something on the surface. You can see all this, all this charcoal here, yeah, and, and, and sort of red fire-cracked... Silt How stuff. can you say for sure, though, that that's Neolithic and not Bronze Age or even later? Uh, that could be Bronze Age. It, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they didn't use it in the Bronze Age. But we do know there are Neolithic people here because clever old Matt has found, let's have a look, about ten minutes ago, that. Do you know what that is? Is that an arrowhead? Yeah, it is. It's a very distinctive leaf-shaped arrowhead. It's snapped across the middle, that's why it's got a flat end. And they're most commonly found in causeway enclosures. It's a beautiful find, isn't it's it? It's absolutely cracking. It's so thin and beautifully made. That lovely ripple flaking on it. It's a lovely thing. 